Let's talk about Spring Boot. Spring Boot is an extension of the Spring framework. That is, under the hood, Spring Boot is using the Spring framework. Then why do we need Spring Boot? What benefits does Spring Boot offer us? In a nutshell, Spring Boot simplifies the Spring-based application development. So by using Spring Boot, we are making developers' life easier and happier. The Spring framework is great. It helps manage all the beings and all to wire them together. There is a small problem though. And this is life. We were using the Spring framework to solve a problem. But introducing the Spring framework to the project brings us other problems. So we need to keep fixing those problems. There is no free lunch. The biggest criticism is the overhead of configurations to get a Spring-based application started. In other words, the Spring framework is not out of the box, meaning after introducing Spring to your Java project, it won't run immediately. You have to spend a few hours carefully setting up both the Spring framework and all the third-party libraries you use in your project through configurations. Take a look at this picture here. This is a very typical Spring-based project without Spring Boot. To get the Spring framework to work, you will have to write a bunch of configuration files, such as config file for logger, mybatis, data source, config files for Spring and Spring MVC, and the config file for the entire web application. Configuring a Spring-based application is tedious and time-consuming. Basically, as an application developer, you have to tell the Spring framework first where to look for or discover classes so that Spring can create and register beings with the IOC container. This is called bean registration. Second, how to wire beans together. In other words, define their dependencies so that Spring can inject beans. This whole process is known as Spring Framework Configuration. Also, if you want to use a third-party library like Hibernate or MyBetis in your project, and we know that you cannot just download the jars and include them on the project's class path and expect it to work automatically. If you want the Spring IOC container to kick in and work with Hibernate, for example, you have to tell Spring how to config Hibernate objects. For example, the URL of the database, the size of the connection pool, where to find all the domain objects, and so on. How to tell Spring? Define XML files. A developer has to define a dozen of XML configuration files. Those files are for the Spring framework to know how to config beans. It is very common to spend two hours simply just to write a lot of XML configuration files required to build a Spring-based application. So, Spring Boot comes to save the day. Spring Boot is an extension of the Spring framework that offers several productivity enhancements. The most well-known of these enhancements is Auto Configuration, where Spring Boot can make reasonable guesses of what beings need to be configured and wired together based on jar dependencies added to the class path, environment variables, and other factors so that you can get started with minimum fuss. Most Spring Boot applications need very little Spring configuration. Some people call this opinionated defaults configuration, or sensible defaults. Let's use the Hibernate example again. If you are going to use Hibernate in Spring Boot, all you need to do is to tell Spring Boot, I'm going to use Hibernate. Spring Boot will auto-configure it for you based on the sensible defaults provided by the Spring Boot team. And boom, you can start using Hibernate without writing any configurations by yourself. I think this idea of sensible defaults makes a lot of sense. When you want to config Hibernate for a project, you probably will go online and Google it. For example, hunt through Hibernate's official documentation and sample code. 
Or just go to Stack Overflow and see how other people config Hibernate. Copy and paste their configurations. That actually inspired the Spring Boot team. They're asking, why not we prepare some sensible defaults configuration for the Spring framework and many commonly used libraries like Hibernate? So when people want to use them, they can just start with those default configurations. If people have different requirements, the defaults will back off. For beginners and most projects, the defaults provided by Spring Boot are good enough. This whole idea is kind of similar to when you install a software on your computer. You download the package, and you can just click Next, Next, and Next. Use defaults all along, and boom, you can start using the software right away. But if you are an experienced user, you can change those defaults. That's the spirit of Spring Boot. It tries to minimize configurations that a developer needs to do so that you can enjoy a fast getting started experience for Spring development. Spring Boot is out of the box. You are very lucky that there is Spring Boot because developing in a non-Spring Boot, Spring-based project is very time-consuming and tedious. You need to config everything by yourself. Okay, the takeaway point here is that the Spring framework makes developing non-trivial Java applications simpler. And Spring Boot makes developing a Spring-based application simpler.